The second day of the 30th Naga Students Federation Conference began with a significant event with Dr. Kekre Lule Yome unveiling the monolith at Nai Kapung Kasom Thungdar Ukrul, symbolizing unity and shared identity among the Nagas. In his keynote address during the inaugural session, Dr. Yume emphasized the profound significance of the term Naga in transcending geographical boundaries and fostering harmonious coexistence among people with diverse backgrounds. The conference, a prominent platform for Nagas from various walks of life, witnessed Dr. Yume shedding light on the political origins of the NSF. He highlighted how the organization was conceived with a clear political purpose aiming to address collective challenges faced by the Nagas. Amidst the intricate web of divisions and distinct identities within the Naga community, Dr. Yume highlighted the underlying order that persists even in the midst of chaos and disorder. Concluding his address, Dr. Yume called for introspection and stressed the significance of comprehending the aspirations and identities of neighboring communities. He urged attendees to adopt a broader perspective that goes beyond internal divisions, fostering greater understanding and cooperation. The event also featured captivating performances that added color to the conference. A special musical performance by the musical trio from Dimapur entertained the audience, while warm greetings were shared by notable organizations like NESO, ENSF and the United Naga Council. A cultural item was presented by the Tangkul Nagas, showcasing the rich heritage of the community. The cultural immersion was further enriched by a folk fusion tune performed by the renowned Guru Ryuben, Mashangva. The event reached its conclusion with remarks from the chairperson encapsulating their sense of unity and shared aspirations. I, on behalf of the local organizing committee, please greetings and welcome each and every one of you to the inaugural function of the, the, the Tate General Conference of the Naga Student Federation 2023 at the crew. For those of us who have come outside the district, let me say welcome to crew once again. It is indeed a pleasure to see the faces of brothers and sisters rushing home for a family gathering like this. This conference in Tukru was scheduled for 2021. In the 76 years of her journey, the record of NSF shows that this is the third general conference that is taking place here in Uku, Nunpur. We, as a convener, I would like to say that we have faced a lot of odds. Despite of all odds, we could make it. And thank you to all the leaders who stood behind to make it success. The team of this conference was chosen as 
Now that's beyond hope. Is to re-energize ourselves to team and to prepare to marshal. And therefore, we are fortunate to have a person like Dr. Kekulobe Yome, the 30th General Conference, to be shifted in our working. However, considering the will and inspiration of the Tangkul Katangnao and the Tangkul community, and considering the views and minds of the Federation Minister of the Nagasaki Federation, we have resolved to have our general friends here in Oku. We took just 40 this time to make this event a grand success, for which I want to congratulate the President and colleagues of TKS and the local organizing committee for arranging such a wonderful program as well as the system in place for all of us to have this general conference again success. On behalf of the Nagasaki Federation, we would like to express our sincere thanks particularly to our honored guests, Dr. Kekri Yomi, and all the dignitaries, despite the challenging weather and the rough roads, all of you could make it, which make this target general conference of the Nagasaki Student Federation a grand success.
has been working together for, in so many issues, have been doing a lot of works together. When it is a general cause, a common cause, where we need to come together, then we always have been doing it. And even today, when I joined ENSF as the president, I have personally experienced the coordination, the rapport that the ENSF and the NSF have. And I genuinely, and I personally would like to thank my friend uh, KDEP, I call him KDEP here, for giving us a lot of opportunities. ENSF, not only this uh, session, but we have been to so many programs organized by NSF. And in all the programs, we were given different insights of the Nagas, and we are really thankful for that. Naga as a nation hold no grudge against any community and does not lend any hand of favor, but has been working hard by Putin's every possible effort for the restoration of peace and normalcy between the varying communities. However, due to situation demand, the UNC is constrained to issue a statement at this hour to the notice of everyone about the positions of the Navas. That the Nagas will never accept any type of political settlement to any community under any circumstances. If our land, identity, history, or political rights are affected. Ladies and gentlemen, today, unfortunately, divisions are continuing. But not by the old imposed political boundaries of India and Myanmar sharing the land of the Nagas. Divisions are continuing within the Naga family and perhaps much more rampantly and vigorously than ever before. But why? Why is the question? We have a lot of problems. Tribalism, massive egos and intolerance are our problems today. These negative self-destructive traits have become the hallmark of our present generation. We appear to have left our souls behind somewhere in our past with our leaders and elders who left us midway to continue this long artist's to continue this long artist's journey into the unknown. Giving up personal interest and respecting the general interest of the Nagas is a must today if we are to survive as a people. If our generation is to grow. We also have to give our future generation a world they can call their own a world they would be proud of.
from Dimapur to Imphal side. They went all the way from Siljar through the Jiriba Barak Valley. They came up to Imphal. Then they tied up with the British, uh, sorry, uh, the Manipuri uh, king. So when they came down to Kohima, it was a band of 700 musketeers, 800 coolies, about 1,500, all armed to the teeth, crossing the Angami country. Definitely, to see a complete set of strangers in 1832, that really created what we call panic. Our NASO president, he highlighted about the fear of immigrants, the fear of others, the fear of non-indigenous people taking over. I come back to Madam Caroline. She was married for barely 12 months. Her husband was killed. There was no time to mourn. The warriors collecting from different villages, from different tribes, they decided to finish off the British Empire in India. Their first attack was on the Wahima garrison. This is before the British could organize themselves to fight the Konama War. We all know that G.H. Daman was killed, beheaded, I'm sorry to say this. They never found his head. The torso was only found on the morning of, what do we call, uh, on the morning of November 30, Caroline Thompson Daman left Naga Hills forever without even seen the last remains of her husband. The head was finally surrendered after she left Naga Hills. She only had to contend wearing the torso and she left accompanied by 50 riflemen never to return to Naga Hills. The Nagas, we today, we have globally exported ourselves with many nice things. The world has also known us for many good things. It has also known us for many different reasons. Today, we ask ourselves, why cannot we as a people export ourselves? And for that, we need to work more. We need to, what do we call? But constantly within our midst, despite the creativity which we come out with, fear embodies us. The largest fear, the largest fear which was universal with all post-colonial societies, which became the epitome of political theory, became the issues of all developing societies across the world, is the 706th World Memorandum which was presented to Simon Commission when the Simon Commission visited Naga Hills in 1929. Fear, they say, is another name we gave to ourselves for defenselessness. Are we so defenseless? Are we not in a position to defend? We know that all anxieties and fears of 20th century are embodied in the Simon Commission. We are a small people. It talks about our poor country. It talks about we have no unity amongst us. It talks about our small population. It talks about the politics of our differences. Language, which also keeps us different from each other. It talks about we fear the introduction of foreign laws and customs to supersede our own customary law, which we now enjoy. And so, it, it reflects not only a fear which Nagas were fearing, but this fear was universal to all developing societies all across the world. The fear of other, the fear of others, and today we can say that we are a proud society, proud for what? Proud for many things, and for that today we must remember how ideas are driving us, because as I said in the beginning, changes are inevitable, changes will come. We have patriotism, people just following the stars, 
walk all the way to China, what for? To get training arms and come back and fight India. Today, I seriously doubt whether the younger generation, even if you give them first class, business class to get, whether they will go and get training and come back and do the same thing. So I said generation gap exists. Ideas cannot remain static. Patriotism is another thing. Nationalism is another thing. We need to understand all these gaps. We know that along with many changes which are taking place, along with many changes which are adapting to changes, one of the elements is in an era of globalization, the market and the consumer driven element is definitely changing us to see that we see social economic hegemonization. We talk about Koreanization of Nagas. We talk about priestly presence in our midst. And so, today we see that ideas are also changing. I will want to ask some questions, problematize some questions. How has the idea of nationalism shaped the modernity of Nagas? And whether there is a continuity or discontinuity, or is it there is a historical progression to this? Secondly, whether it is the idea that, that has shaped or have been shaping the interests of the Naga people, or whether it is the people that are currently shaping the interests of the idea. Thirdly, whether the history of ideas and political moments that traditionally gave momentum to Naga Modernity, is it relevant as a popular culture or is it very much visible in our everyday politics? Teddy Roderick, an economist, talks about three ways through which ideas shape interests. First, ideas determine how political elite define themselves and the objectives they pursue. How they choose to act. Is it because of money? Is it because of honor? Is it because of status? Is it because of longevity to hold power? Or is it simply because you want to have a place, a name in history? Secondly, how ideas shape interests? Ideas determine how political actors views about how the world works. We must understand how the world is working or is it our, our ideas, our strategies, is it going according to that or is it not? Thirdly, ideas determine the strategies that political actors believe they can pursue. Ideas determine the strategies the political actors believe they can pursue. Today, I, as a younger generation, as not so young, but as somebody who has the aspiration of the younger generation, our ideas may be in conflict with many of the thoughts. We know that political theory lacks a sense of territory. Likewise, territory lacks a political theory. Today, people, land, culture are united. That is what defines our identity. If you do not have land, you do not have an identity. Your identity is a transaction with land. In the beginning, I said I belong to Bohema village, Borabosti, many people call it. We have opened our doors for all of us to come and make that as a capital. It's a capital not by our choice. We never said, come Nagas, make this as your home, make this as your capital. Through circumstances of history, we talk about the British. Bohemia was chosen to be the capital, and circumstantially, it happened to be the capital even till today. My village faced a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure which many of you will not understand. Your understanding of this pressure will also be Perhaps you may not be able to understand it fully. The first is, in my village, there is a lot of land pressure. 
When I say land and identity is important, a lot of my people, a lot of my villagers still own land. But many people, they do not have land. They do not have their ancestral property anymore. So how can you say that you are a Kohima villager when you do not have land to your name anymore? So likewise, today our struggles are many. We are fighting in our own ways. Collectively, we have our own memory. Individually, our memories are shattered. We have our own aspirations. Some can be collectively, uh, 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 we can collectively come to an agreement. Some, we have to pursue. Not only that, our fears, some we need to fight collectively. Some of our fears can be localized, need to be localized, perhaps. My village fears is something which we need to discuss at the village level. This we cannot bring it to the Naga National, to the Naga society level. Likewise, today, I know, even if we do not speak, many of our issues can be localized. We put our local issues in front of what we need to collectively put together. There are things we heard about the old tale of Aesop. It's easy to break a stick, but when a stick is all gathered, when all these individual sticks are put in the form of a bundle, it is impossible to break it. I bring greetings also from my chief minister, Sri Dibiurio. I told him that I'm coming for this. He extends his warm greetings to all of you. He also expressed some of the social unrest which is expressing in our neighborhood. It also calls for us to, in an uninhabited, uninhabited manner, for us to also at times not only condemn, but at times try to understand in the form of even coming out with a statement perhaps or even in the form of mediation. When neighbors fight, a third party is involved. We know the role of our brave women in traditional Naga society, how they intervene when their men folk are fighting. So it is important for us to adapt to changes which are happening around us. It is also important to understand the ideas which are floating around us. Likewise, how we have feared, it is important for us to re-evaluate our fears because our hope stems from our fears. We are small people. We want to be individuals. We want to show that we are different from each other. Today, we have in our midst a new proposal coming in the form of frontier state. If we want to divide our family further, we are not opposed to anything. Let us divide ourselves. Let us refine our division, till our individual unit, even within my tribe. If we want to divide, you can divide it to Southern Nogami, Eastern Nogami, North, uh, what do we call? Within them also, if you want to divide further, you can divide it into this village, this village. So today we are faced with our inability to also recognize and appreciate each other's individuality. I think this is important. We know that much to our make-believe thinking that we are united, we are one. We are not only divided, we all possess our own separate individuality. Today our aspiration is that we as one we come under the banner of Naga. Naga unites us. If you look at our neighbor, the uh, Bugi, Zomi, Tadao, unlike us, the British did not give them a unifying name. So if we are to unify their tribe, you have to call it as a Zao, Tadao, Bugi, Jin. We have to conglomerate. So perhaps today we are talking about Nagas. But if the word Naga rose by any name, we'll call it smell the same. If we do not have what we call Naga, perhaps today we will be calling each other as Southern, Central, Eastern, Tengenia, Naga. We are a plus much, much ahead of them because Nagas today still owe our land. Our lands have not been de
requests from us, unlike some of the richer indigenous people or the more developed indigenous people across the world. So today, let us begin from where our strength is. Our identity is impeccable. We need to understand our differences that within under the umbrella of Naga, we are different from each other. I, as a student of system knowledge, we know that in catastrophe theory, when there is chaos, when there is total anarchy, there is still an order in chaos. There is still an order in disorder. So today, the Naga home perhaps outwardly looks like in total chaos, in total disorder, but there is always a harmony. You go by the seaside, listen to the waves of the sea. It comes as a splash. You listen minutely to all the noises. It is a collection of so many noises that makes the sea splash, the waves come about. So today, for us to make the wave bigger, stronger, louder, we must review ourselves and today, for us to walk ahead, appropriate to our team, solidarity beyond borders. We have understood who we are. I think it is important for us to also understand who our neighbors are. Thank you so much.